Aside from the visible tales of death and destruction, World War II left us with many mysteries and unanswered questions. While we have gotten to the bottom of several of these mysteries, many still remain unanswered and might not be getting answers anytime soon. France's swift and surprising fall during World War II, what remains of the French army, along with British and Belgian troops, retreated from the mainland to the port of Dunkirk. With the ocean behind them and the Germans coming from the opposite direction, the Allies were truly between the devil and the deep blue sea. Just before the Germans could launch an assault and reduce the thousand of Allies' force at the beach to nothing, Hitler ordered them to stand down and for the next three days. The German force looked on the, as the Allies were evacuated with boats, ship, yachts, and anything else that could sell. Why did Hitler order the German assault force to stand down? An assault from the Allied troops at Dunkirk would have an unforgettable effect on the war. It would have dealt a serious blow to the British army and led to the complete defeat of the French army. Before he committed suicide, Hitler said that the order was a sporting gesture, meant to lure England into talks with Germany so they could end the war. Many dispute this, however. They believed that Hitler had a bitter rivalry with his generals and was trying to show them that it was he who decided where, when and how German troops fought. Others believed that Hitler was surprised by the swift fall of France and he feared the retreat to Dunkirk was a trap. He might also have wishes to prevent his tanks from moving into unfavorable terrain. Or maybe he simply wanted to give the German Air Force the pleasure of finishing the Allies. The November 1941 sinking of Her Majesty Australia's ship HMAS Sydney by the German ship HSK Cormoran was a big blow to the Australian art government. It was so mysterious, surprising and shocking that the Australian government forbid any media house from reporting the incident for almost two weeks. The whole mystery began on November the 19th, 1941, when the Sydney spotted an unidentified ship several hundred miles from Perth, Australia. The Sydney gave chase and ordered an anonymous ship to identify itself. The unidentified ship raised a flag indicating it was a Dutch merchant ship. As the Sydney got closer to close actually, the merchant ship lowered its Dutch flag and raised a German flag. As it turned out, it was a German warship called the HSK Cormoran. Not surprisingly, the naval battle began with both ship engaging with torpedo, machine guns, and every other weapon they had on board. The Cormoran damaged the Sydney's guns, turret, bridge, tower, and bow. The Sydney, in return, damaged the Cormoran's engine, effectively rendering it immobile. In time, both ships were on fire. The Cormoran's crew abandoned their ship when their fire became unbearable. But the same could not be said of the Sydney crew, who turned their burning ship and sailed away from the Seine. The 645-man crew was never seen again. Nine days after the ship and its crew went missing, one of its lifeboats was found at sea by another Australian warship. Another lifeboat was also found in Queensland. And a third was found with a decomposed body of a silent three months later.
Hendrik Müller was a top Nazi official and commander of the Gestapo, often called Gestapo Müller to differentiate him from another Nazi commander of the same name. He ran sparrings for the Nazi government, was a leading figure in the Holocaust and remains the only high-ranking Nazi official whose fate is still a mystery. Whether he died, escaped, or was killed in captivity, or deliberately free to become a spy for the CIA or the Soviet Union, is one question that remains unanswered. There were intentionally speculation that he died and was buried in a grave in Berlin. The grave in question was exhumed, and the remains were found to be of two unknown soldiers and not Mueller's. Adolf Eichmann, another top Nazi commander who was arrested in 1960, said that he believed Mueller had survived. The CIA, however, made it clear that it never came across Gestapo Mueller, although the Allies did come across several Heinrich Müllers. As it turned out, Heinrich Müller was a very popular and common name in Germany. Most of these Heinrich Müllers had no middle name. So it was not unusual for their fights to get mixed up. The last confirmed because of Mueller is from the day after Hitler committed suicide, when Mueller refused to escape with na another Nazi force as the Red Army advanced toward Berlin. He said that he was ready to fall with the regime and would never allow himself to be captured by the Russian. According to German historian Professor Johann Stoschel. Heinrich Müller died in 1945 and was buried at the German Air Force headquarters before he was finally moved to a Jewish cemetery in Berlin that contains several mass graves. However, we won't be finding out any time soon if Müller was actually buried there, as Jewish law strictly prohibits exhumation of buried corpses. The I-52 was an advanced submarine used by Japan during World War II. It was sunk in the Atlantic Ocean by the Allied airplane on the night of June 23, 1944. On board of the submarine were 112 crewmen, some German scientists operating a world match Enigma encoding machine, at least two tons of gold. 250 tons of tank and 44 tons of rubber. There was also several tons of aluminium, tungsten, molybdenum, magnesium, and quinine. Considering the high quantity of crucial was supplies on board, many believed that the submarine was transporting them to the German government in exchange for German military technology. Others believe that it was carrying a peace proposal between the United States and Japan. Declassified World War II military documents revealed that Yoshikazu Fujimura, Japan's naval attached to Switzerland, who had been in talks with the United States, intended to meet with the submarine to collect a peace proposal. The word "dieb" turned out to be one of the solution to a crossword puzzle in Daily Telegraph newspaper in August 1942. This looks quite normal until you realize that two days after the puzzle ran and one day after its solution was given, Allied troops launched a deadly assault on the French port of Dieppe. MI5, Britain's intelligence service, spotted this but ignored it as a coincidence. Two years later, more puzzles appeared in the Daily Telegraph. This time, they had answers like Utah, Overlord, Omaha, Newbury, and Neptune, all of which were directly related of the upcoming D-Day landing. The anti-landing operation was called Operation Overlord. Omaha and Utah were codenamed for beaches that would be assaulted. 
Mulberry was a code name for the temporary hebos that were to be constructed after the assault, while Neptune was a code for the anti-D-Day naval operation. Leonardo, a school principal who was also responsible for the Red Telegraph's Cogwell's puzzles, was detailed and questioned about how he came across the codes. No one really knows how, since he refused to speak about his time in detention. In 1984, one of his former students named Ronald French revealed that Daw used to make him and several others feel blankos were puzzles. French was very familiar with the course since he often heard them from Allied troops camping close to the school and might have filled them in, although he was not sure if he did. However, two years before French talk, another unnamed boy said that he put down the name. No one knows who the unnamed boy is. If he was truly responsible for the D-Day puzzle, who was responsible for the D-Day puzzle? Was that instant to reach a coincidence?